welcome to another edition of Park Talk Podcast, the official podcast of the Naperville Park District. Hi everyone, I'm Sue Omenson. Living in the suburbs, we enjoy seeing backyard birds and hearing their cheerful songs as we go about our daily activities. It's like having nature come to us. But birds also are a great lure to get us outside and to go where they are, in the woods, meadows, or wetlands. Today, I'm happy to welcome two members of the DuPage Birding Club, President Steve Constanellos and past President Joe Suchecki, to fill us in about the rewards and the fun of bird watching. Both Steve and Joe are familiar with some of the good bird watching spots at the Naperville Park District. So thanks for being here, both of you. Um, Steve, would you tell us a little bit about the DuPage Birding Club and how you got involved? Well, the DuPage Birding Club has been around since the mid 80s. Um, I grew up in Naperville. But as I gradually became more aware of nature around us, I got into trees and birding. I um, lived out east for a while. And when I came back, I started getting heavily involved in spring and Christmas bird counts, which are annual events around here. And when I was doing those, I met a lot of people who were members of the DuPage Birding Club. And and when my schedule allowed, I joined the club so I could, you know, I started going on the field trips and I started to um, just get to know a lot of the more local birders than I ever had before. That's great. And Joe, um, speaking of birding in Naperville, where do you like to go birding in this area? Well, we're lucky uh, that we're in Naperville. Naperville has some great birding spots. The best spots to go are actually the forest preserves that are in in Naperville, uh, simply because they're uh, large and they have real good habitat. That includes, you know, Springbrook Ferry, McDowell Grove, and Green Valley. So those are the kind of the three spots that we get people from all over Chicagoland coming to Naperville to look at birds at those locations. Uh, Within the park district, uh, Knock Knowles Park is is very good. Uh, the parks along the river, Pioneer Park, DuPage River Park. Also, um, we found that uh, Seeger Park up in the north part of Naperville is an excellent uh, place to go look for birds. You know, anything that has lots of trees and woods and natural habitat is where you're going to find the birds. Yeah, I think anywhere you find the DuPage River, either branch, you're going to have a lot of good birding. I found that at Pioneer Park. Um, I mean, I've seen eagles flying up the river. There's orioles nesting along the river. As uh, he mentioned, Seeger Park, which has a kind of a wetland that's there at least half the year where there's a lot of migrating birds that stop by. I've been going there for many years. And there's a ravine. It's a really interesting park in a small space. It just shows you that there's a lot of nature packed into even some places that might surprise you. It's nice to know that you can kind of get away from civilization a little bit, even in these parks. It doesn't take too much. So Steve, uh, what would a typical birding outing be like? I've never been on something like that. Well, almost anywhere you walk around, there's going to be birds. So I think every time you walk out your door, it's a bird <laughs> outing. True. But um, if you were to try to spy a few more birds, um, well, one, I would listen for birds, but if uh, visually as well, I mean, it, if you have a pair of binoculars around, I would start to carry those around with you. I know I keep a pair in my car just in case, and um, I have some better ones at home too. So I think a first step would be finding a, you know, inexpensive pair of binoculars to use to try to get a good look from a distance because, you know, a lot of birds are kind of skittery. Sure. Um, but we have field trips at the club where you can get to know other people and get sort of guided around and pointed out. And the more people in many cases that are looking at, a, you know, you can sort of find more birds that way and get some more education about it. And I just like to have a big floppy brim hat like a gardener might wear. So kind of helps get the glare out of my face and um, gives me sort of a trademark as well. So, oh, that's interesting. Right. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> uh, I, I think binoculars are a little bit hard to use at first. Like you, is there, is there a trick to trying to find that bird? <laughs> well, one thing I'll say is we are going to have a YouTube video about binoculars. We have a YouTube channel, and that's going to be coming along down the pike a little, a little oh, later great. from now. Maybe, maybe Joe has a comment about binocular use. I, I just picked it up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's good to have a a good pair of binoculars. Because some of the really cheap ones don't work well. 
Okay. Um, the other thing that you need to make sure you do, binoculars are adjustable so that you have to adjust the width to your eye so that you're, you're seeing one image. And so people often tend not to do that correctly. Uh, and then there is a trick to finding the birds. Um, and it just takes practice, really, because, you know, beginners always have a, a hard time. They see a bird and then they try and find it in binoculars and it's not there. Right. So uh, the trick is to always just keep your eyes on the bird where the movement is, especially. And okay. then keep looking there and lift up your binoculars and you'll you should be able to find the bird easily there. So that works out better. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a yeah. good tip. What about uh, taking children with you on, on an outing? Would you have any advice for that? Well, I, you know, I think you, you need to start out, you know, pretty slowly and introduce them to some of the common birds that you're going to see all over, you know, such as, you know, cardinals in the backyard. You know, if you have a feeder, that's a good way to get them started uh, looking at you know, the common birds that are coming to a bird feeder in their backyard where it's easy to see. Um, and then, you know, again, just starting out and going out slowly on, in the field and getting them interested. Probably make, make your outing short because they, you know, spend, attention span is pretty, pretty uh, <laughs> right. short. Um, but, you know, if you can get them interested in some of the basic birds, some kids can just get very interested and become very good birders. Uh, you know, we have a couple of birders in the club who, who are young and uh, some of them are, are very good and just uh, take a lot of opportunities to learn all the bird, you know, most of the birds and the bird sounds and are pretty good at identifying things. I would imagine they would be. That That's really nice to give them that opportunity at a yeah, young age. Right. I'll, I'll put in a, you know, plug for your nature center at Knock Bowls because I, I think that's that good. they offer or in the past have offered some, uh, you know, trips for families on birds and, and whatever. So that's a good spot mm -hmm. to, to do that. Our, um, our page, if I, our webpage has a learn about birds section with a profiles of basic birds, a little bingo card game you can print out and, you know, find a bird on a roof or an orange bird or whatever it says on the card. Um, yeah, oh, and I've cool. met young birders who just got into it this past year because they had to stay home more. <laughs> and um, sure, <laughs> and I, you know, this one uh, young woman I met said she had a whole binder full of information about birds now, having spent a year, you know, kind of researching them <laughs> and <laughs> eager to get out in the field to learn more. So I think teaching kids a respect for you know keep you know keeping some distance between the geese and things like that, but also just appreciating their their existence and everything is, is a wonderful thing you can do. And then if people really get into it, there's a group called Young Birders um, sponsored by the Illinois Ornithological Society. I think it's mostly teens, but they can you know meet more like-minded uh, young people. And you know they have all kinds of events and stuff for, you know, so kids can really get to know each other and the birds and have a lot of fun. So, oh, that sounds like a great opportunity. And we'll post uh, links to the Birding Club on our web page that goes along with this podcast, so you can look those up. Joe, um, how have you benefited by spending time in nature, like through birding? Yeah, well, b birding is a great hobby because um, you obviously are outside and in enjoying uh, all the native habitats and nature. And it's something that you can do wherever you go. You know, just pack your binoculars and go out and find, you know, That's go out true. and find new things wherever you go. Um, you know, if, if you get into birding, it's kind of a combination of hobby, hobby and learning and, and sport. You're always looking for something different. And uh, the, with the way that birds <clears throat> migrate and fly, you always have the opportunity to find something different. So it it's that way. And it, it's, you're out, uh, gives you a... <clears throat> a sense of satisfaction and enjoy being out birding. So it's good. It's good for your uh, mental mm, yeah. uh, state, especially especially these mm -hmm. days. It's a good thing to get out. Yes. And to have that fun of finding what you were looking for or finding something that you weren't looking for. A good example of that is I was out yesterday at Springbrook Prairie doing some management work and 
uh, had my first sandhill cranes flying over. Ooh. And uh, this is about the time that they're migrating back to their breeding spots. And I was out there doing some work and <clears throat> all of a sudden I heard the call, which is very characteristic. And I knew they were around somewhere and then you have to <laughs> look up way high in the sky. And But it's always something to look forward to the first, the first migrants coming back in the spring. Oh, that is exciting. Yeah, I heard some too yesterday. I go, those aren't geese. So then I, I tracked them down. Yeah, that was good. They have a different kind of honk than a goose. So, you know, if you can learn that, that's a first step towards birding. Um, but uh, about your question, um, I mean, growing up here and everything, I I really credit a lot of my love of nature to Naperville Park District and Forest Preserve properties. I mean, I just love of place from getting out there and seeing what's living there and growing up along the DuPage River is, I mean, that was kind of the foundation of my interest in nature in general. And it's, you know, everywhere I've lived since I've carried that with me. And I find it just, you know, like Joe was saying, it's a, it's a mentally can be challenging, satisfying, but even just aesthetically or restoring your sanity or whatever you want to call it. I mean, you can have some really beautiful, I mean, just standing at DuPage River Park in late summer with hundreds or dozens, I guess, of chimney swifts flying all around feeding before they migrate is an amazing experience. Or standing in Pioneer Park at the same time you're watching hundreds of cedar wax wings just flying all above in the trees, eating insects and berries and things is just one of those things you just are in awe of. But um, yeah, it's, it's a wonderful thing. And speaking of seeing lots of birds, um, I have heard in the news that there is a general decline in um, in birds and what can park districts and forest preserves do to help birds and how can everyone help? There is a number of programs over the years that scientists have looked at and they've come up with an alarming number of uh, declines in bird species you know, throughout the United States. And a lot of that is primarily due to habitat destruction where mm -hmm. you know, there isn't as many areas for those birds to either rest during migration or, or nest anymore, simply because the habitat has been destroyed. Um, it, you know, in Illinois in particular, you know, it used to be the prairie state. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, like I believe the figure is like 99.9% .9 of all the prairie in Illinois was you know, gone before 1900. And so we have very little habitat. So those Birds that are adapted to those specific habitats don't have any place in this, so they're declining. And so the the main uh, thing that we need to be doing is maintaining or restoring natural habitats. Mm -hmm. And that has worked, uh, you know, and I've been doing that as a volunteer at Springbrook Prairie for many years. And we were able to bring a lot of those grassland birds back at, at oh. Springbrook just because we're managing the habitat for them and, and restoring prairie and keeping open grasslands. So that's what needs to be done. And so the best thing that the park district can do is um, identify places where native habitats can be restored, mm -hmm. managing those because we have a lot of invasive species coming in um, that, that change the habitat. And in terms of individuals, um, there are lots of opportunities to volunteer to help that. You really can make a difference um, by volunteering and helping to maintain or create those habitats that the birds need. Yeah. Picking up on what Joe was just talking about, I mean, you have to remember a lot of these birds that come through here might spend half their life in Canada and half their life in a place like Brazil. So, I mean, there, we're a good thoroughfare as well as a residency for a lot of bird species. So I like to, I always love when I see a map of where a bird lives and I see it, the map covers Latin America, Central America, all the way up to Canada, because that's where a lot of these birds spend their time. They go back and forth. So it's important to give them places to rest and eat and breed all along that whole, our whole half of the world or whatever you want to call it. So, um, that's one thing. And I have seen some great evidence at the parks. I, you know, I stumble upon controlled burns more than I ever did before, both at park district and forest preserve lands. Um, Pioneer has, you know, they've changed the grasslands a bit here and there. And, that, you know, things are, 
it seems like an, you know things are improving. So I, I just want to you know it'd be great to carry that forward and just take those lands we've set aside and make them even nicer and maybe find a few more to set aside if we can. That would be great. Thank you for listening. The Naperville Park District's mission is to provide park and recreation experiences that promote healthy lives, healthy minds, and a healthy community. Park Talk Podcast is a production of the Naperville Park District. 